because um, I regularly do engage in um, conversations with uh, fellow young people, um, asking about how life is really going with them and um, how they are actually finding situations they encounter in their daily engagements, you know, with one another and also with their immediate surroundings. Um, yeah, so there are times when they, they tell me a lot and uh, those are what usually inspire the contents I share. You know, so that's also another example. I mean, um, recently there was one uh, conversation I had with a few a few guys and um, the challenge they actually expressed. And you know, you could see, you could see the commonness of what the challenge really was. Was that each of them, sorry, each of them having to narrate his or her, sorry, um, yes, their, uh, their, their challenges or their challenging moments have something to do with not being able to perform a particular task or not being able to meet a certain deadline because they have had to reschedule and reschedule and reschedule. I mean, doing, doing what needs to be done over a certain period of time at another time. So then the deadline comes and they would not have been able to accomplish this. The key word in this is procrastination. Procrastination can be very, very destructive, very, very damaging. If you don't find ways to immediately handle it or check it, it can really get your life's progress delayed to a very high degree, you know. But the question here is how do you actually um, get around procrastination as you watch me i'm asking you do you also sometimes um, find um, yourself procrastinating i mean rescheduling uh, certain activities in your lifetime that should have actually been carried out over a particular period now the truth of the matter is you know sometimes sometimes procrastination can be good sometimes so underline the expression i just made sometimes considering that maybe over a particular period what you need to perform the task is not available right so then you may be Tarrying or waiting for an appropriate time or trying to find those resources and looking for means to get a meal available to you to enable you to perform the task very, very appropriately. Because your point is you wouldn't want to begin and remain or get stuck, right? Not being able to continue because of you lacking um, the resource or the, the material that could enable you to complete the task. So over this period, yes, it helps in a certain way. But when it becomes habitual, when you have no particular reason, I mean, the reason not being so tangible, the reason not being what really should get you to have to reschedule the task. Here is where there comes to be a very huge question mark. So then you must have to find ways possible to check it. Because the case not taken, it's going to be a condition of your mind one that will get you regularizing the practice and it becoming a habit you know so i'm sharing with you um seven seven ideas or seven tips that can help you easily manage and correct to a far extent the condition of procrastination of the mind now the first tip is you prioritize your tasks and responsibilities Prioritize the task. To prioritize something, we all know what that means. It's, it's so so much uh, not a new word. Ensuring all, ens yes, ensuring that um, amongst the lots of activities you want to perform, the one which requires your attention the most is placed first and worked out as soon as possible. Or what you think can be completed over a short period of time, you put it first. And what you think requires a longer time to complete, you put it below or last. This way you are just prioritizing the task, right? Now, um, as necessary as it is, you ensure that you take an inventory of what you like to accomplish and its degree of importance. So you're doing this, you are gradually prioritizing. And then you write it all down, all the activities you want to accomplish, all the tasks, write them down in that order. You write down all of these in a list and then you rank the tasks that require immediate attention and energy. So, for example, uh, you want to travel, you want to build a house, you want to, um, uh, yes, you want to maybe go to school, you fail your education. Now, among these three, which of them do you think requires a lot of attention? You want to travel, you want to build a house, you want to fail your education. So, if it is failing your education that um, you think is to be first on the list, you rank it first. So, this becomes your topmost priority. And then 
if traveling, having to travel, is what you think should be the second, because while studying, you may be working around, getting your um, your passport, getting, I mean, saving quite enough to enable you and back on this journey. So then put the second. And then having to build, well, you can think, depending on the resources you have, to let it be a long-term plan. Because likely, you know, your strength may not permit you to do that or accomplish that over a short period of time. So that, considering that it will take you a longer time, you place it as your third and prioritize the need, right? So that's just one very simple scenario. So when you're able to rank them this way, it actually gets you, you know, looking and feeling very organized in your mind. So that you know that once you're done with this, the next on the line is that, the next on the line is this. It will help you really remain on track. And at all times, think that yes, there is something I have, you know, to be done. There is something that needs to be done regularly. It shapes your thoughts. It shapes, it really defines your thoughts very, very, very um, properly. Now, the second tip is examine why you are procrastinating in the first place. So you ask yourself a few questions. I mean, this task I have for me. What actually gets me not having so much interest or showing so much interest in it? Is there something about the task that is so intimidating? I mean, gets me not wanting to embark on it? Do, do I actually need more information or resources? I mean, are these the main reasons? Now, once you're able to identify what the reason is, the proper thing to do immediately would be to create an action plan. So you create an action plan by, if it's to do with resources, they have to you want to build a house and using that again. You need a lot of resources in this case. You don't have it. So then it gets you always want, I mean, procrastinating, rescheduling, procrastinating. You plan today, I want to do this. But because of this not being there, you are tempted to push it for another day. So what do you have to do? You create an action plan. Now the action plan is you save. Now when you save, whatever amount you're able to get, that may be enough to purchase this particular building material. You get that down. You save towards another. This particular building material, you get that down, right? So this is actually going to get you remedying the situation gradually. And once you are able to do that, you'll find yourself progressing from one stage to the other. So always ensure that what really is causing you to want to procrastinate, that reason is identified and tackled. The third tip is define the task into smaller portions or smaller parts. You know, when you have a major task, you're writing, you're writing your thesis or you're, you're, you, are, you, are, um, you have a task to um, perform, your boss has assigned you, you have a whole week, you want to submit the, the assigned task the following Monday. It was actually given to you the previous Monday. So what do you do? It's quite cumbersome, very, very huge. It's a major task. You can't do all of it on the first Monday. Nor can you decide to actually do all of it on a particular day within the week. So to get yourself gradually or progressively moving, you can decide to do a portion of it on Monday. You do the other portion on Tuesday. You do the next on Wednesday. In that order, till the very last day, proud to. So depending on the proud to the, the day of having to submit the task to your boss. You know, so with time, you would find yourself really making progress bit by bit, bit by bit. Now this, as I've just said, I'm just quickly re, re um, I, I treated what I, what, I, what I said earlier. Now it can be helpful to break down a major task into a series of smaller tasks to complete. This can really be helpful. It will reduce the workload on you. It will actually help you manage the stress, the level of stress you may have piled up in here. You know, so you can decide to think about what the first part of the whole task should be. So to begin with, I'm working on this portion of the entire task first. You think of the second, what should be there. You think of this third, what should be there in that order. So if it's even on a daily basis, as I said earlier, on Monday I'm doing this, on Tuesday I'm doing this portion of the task, on Wednesday I'm doing this, on, on Thursday, on Friday. Fortunately for you, by Friday, it's likely you may be done. So you may have the weekends for relaxation from the whole task. Monday you get to work, boss, here I come, this, as a task you assigned me to work on. You will never have issues with yourself. You will not have issues with your boss. You will not have issues with anyone. So divide the tasks into smaller 
precautions. It helps to kill procrastination. The fourth is surround yourself with like-minded people. People here in this case, like-minded people, people who don't want to actually procrastinate, right? People who do all they can to fight the condition of procrastination, who wouldn't actually want to um, reschedule a task because they may be thinking, I don't have this, for which reason I shouldn't do this. Surround yourself, get people like that at your workplace. You can just get somebody, even outside of the workplace, you can get somebody. Now, having the right kind of support system can be crucial in beating procrastination. So in this case, what actually would have to make up the support system? So the support system here could be in your mind. You determining not to do that. So then you make it a part of you. But when I'm given a task, this is what or this is the strategy I'm going to have to use. I will just encourage myself. I will portion them. Do part today, do the next, the following day. Or I'll rather get a friend, somebody who is just of the same mind, uh, uh, who is actually of the same mind I, 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 I have, right? To be encouraging me, to be checking on me, to be asking my brother, my sister, or my friend, Charlie, how far have you gotten to? Are you on the work? Are you on the stand? Well, you know, so somebody, a system that will keep you in check as regularly as possible. This can help you really overcome the condition of procrastination will keep you on track to have a system like this always reminding you always um, checking up on you always ensuring that you do or follow the laid down plan you would have actually set for yourself now the fifth tip is give yourself deadlines for completing tasks tomorrow by the end of tomorrow i should be done with this by the 7th of this particular month I should be done with this. Okay, so this task I have here with me, I am looking at any of those here. So December 20, so so and that. I should be done with this task. You set time deadlines. Now, knowing when something needs to be completed can help add structure to your day and prevent procrastination from taking over. This is very, very important. Very, very key in wanting to kill the condition of procrastination of the mind. Now consider how you do this. So you consider certain consistent times throughout the week or throughout the period for when you complete specific tasks. That attitude must be there in your mind. You must develop it. So, for example, you are a student. You have been given an assignment to submit. You have been given a date. Now, apart from the date your lecturer might have given you, you must also assign to yourself a deadline. So when do I actually want to accomplish or complete this assignment? Right, so it was given to you on Monday, you had to submit it on, on, on Friday. So on Monday, you do a bit of it. On Tuesday, you do a portion of it. On Wednesday, you do a portion of it. So then you set for yourself the deadline, possibly Wednesday. So by Wednesday, I should be done with the task. So Monday, you begin. Tuesday, you do a portion of it. Wednesday, you do the final part of it. So then you have Thursday to do an overview, relax your mind over the content you would have gotten within or for the assignment, Friday is submitted. So this kind of way of having to handle tasks will get you not being pushed to procrastinate. Now, additionally, set deadlines for yourself that are realistic. So just as I said, they are very realistic and achievable. So you don't become discouraged by the task on hand. So for example, you, you actually want to build a house, you want to build a house, it's actually a plan to for yourself, right? Now, as obviously as it remains, you know your financial strength is on the low side, yet you want to accomplish or complete building this house in a year or in less than a year, so about um, over a period of six months. This is not realistic and it can't also be achievable unless perhaps you, you are thinking to find every way possible to make it work. But when you consider your strength, this is not a realistic timeline or deadline. So your deadline or your, your timelines for achieving certain tasks must be very, very realistic. You know your strength. So I'm just using this building um, scenario again. So you can just project that, considering my financial strength and the various commitments I have as far as my, my family is concerned, I am projecting that beginning the um, construction of the building from this moment, Perhaps in the next five years, it is possible that by then I actually would have completed it. So then in the next five years, I should be done. 
it is quite reasonable. So you may even end up, depending on how stable you are going to be, you will be very committed that by the fourth into the third year, you could actually complete. So just to clarify things further, your timelines for achieving certain set goals or completing certain set tasks must be very realistic. Else, if it becomes quite unrealistic, it is going to get you feeling pressurized, feeling um, overburdened, and that can cause, cause you to feel discouraged. So then, wanting to give up. It wouldn't be healthy enough for your progress. Now, the set tip is change your mindset. Change your mindset. The mind, as you see it, you can actually see your mind. You can actually feel or see a reflection of what is in your mind and the way you behave. So then, indirectly, you're able to see it. Now, the mindset, the framework of the mindset is very much important to be given a lot of attention. Now, what do you think affects how you behave so extremely? So when your thoughts are always negative about a certain goal you might have set, obviously you should expect that the end result is going to be negative equally. So you you have an assignment given you to perform and submit, or yes, to complete and perform and submit uh, on a certain day, about after, after five days. And then you keep telling yourself, I can't do this assignment, it's too hard. I mean, it's not actually going to get you pushed to want to look for or search for or carry out researches to gather a lot of information to do the work. Because you've already filled your mind with a thought that the assignment is difficult. But when you change that attitude, Okay, it's a challenge. I can do it. So then you are going to be inspired to now begin the process of looking for information. What will enable you to be able to accomplish the task? This is positivity. So then, positive thinking is healthy for the mind. Now, your mindset is just as easily influenced by positive self-talk as negativity. Positive self-talk can have a powerful effect on how you feel. Act and perform. Positive self-talk can also aid in seeing yourself accomplishing the end result of your goal, even before you start working towards it. You know, so usually it is, it is very much essential that you believe in yourself and your ability to succeed. When you have this particular mindset, it will just get you remaining on track and not wanting to do what to give up. It is very ideal for your progress. Now, the last tip is you always write down and cross out. What does this actually mean? So what gets you feeling very motivated is when a task is accomplished, always ensure that it is checked or it is crossed out. Once you're able to do that, once you're able to do that, it will enable you to really feel motivated to want to move on to the next step. I thank you so much for having really stayed on with me till this point. Continue watching my videos. If you have not subscribed, subscribe to the channel to share support. Until I come away another time, stay positive, stay positive, and take a pause. See ya.